I have heard a lot of women in the maternal and childhood center or in the fertility clinic or even around me saying, you know, Mary, I've done the test. I've done all the tests. My husband's sperm is okay. They've done semen analysis. His sperm is good. I've done the test. There's no fibro. There's no this. But yet, I am not getting pregnant. Nosmes Mary, why? Good day everyone and welcome back to Nurses Lecture Room YouTube channel. My name is Miss Mary, popularly known as a nurse with the difference and I make learning easy and accessible for all my viewers. Today, I'm going to be discussing that topic, why am I not getting pregnant despite my results are all good, despite the results of my husband is good. But before I go into details in today's class, into today's jack, if you are new on our YouTube channel, please click on the subscribe button, turn on that notification bell so you don't miss out in any of our videos. For all our returning subscribers, this is Nosmes Mary saying thank you. Let's go there. All right, welcome back. Like Elia said, today we are going to be talking about that topic. Which topic? I've done all the tests, I've done everything, but yet I am not pregnant. In medical terms, it is known as unexplained infertility. We cannot explain the reason. Because for the woman, they've checked, she's seen her meses, her fallopian tube is okay, there is no fibro, there is no polyps, nothing is wrong. They've done all the required tests, but yet the woman is seen to be physically and medically fit to give birth to a child. And also for the man, they've checked the testes are okay, the scrotum is okay, the sperm count is okay, but yet there is no pregnancy. In medical terms, in, in medicine, it is known as unexplained fertility because everything is, seems perfectly okay, but these couples are not getting pregnant after 12 months of trying. So after doing some research and also talking to one or two people online, clients online, I found out that one of the reasons why could be that the spouse is not always present. The spouse is not always present. It's possible the spouse might be traveling. For those that have spouse that travel, it's possible your spouse travel and when your spouse come back, you will have sexual intercourse, but you people didn't have that sexual intercourse on your ovulation dates. So even if you're having sex whenever your spouse is around, but you are not having sex on your ovulation dates, that can lead to infertility. That can make you not get pregnant. So if you have a spouse that is always traveling, that is moving from one spot to another, then comes back, just make sure that you are able to keep track of your ovulation and tell him to come home when you are on your ovulation. I believe when he comes home when you are on your ovulation and you have sex, there might be an increased chance of you getting pregnant. So that is that. That is one thing I noticed for some of my clients. So I got a client, so when we are able to track that, we are able to track the husband, we are able to track the ovulation, finally she is pregnant at the moment. So what I advise, even though both spouses are not always together, it is very, very important to know your ovulation date if you want to get pregnant and give birth to children and give birth to a baby. So for those that are asking, like Ella said, it's known as unexplained infertility. I want you to know that 30% of those people that are battling with infertility are diagnosed with unexplained infertility, unexplained infertility. We don't know the reason why. So what I advise for those that are battling with this, first of all, as a lady, try and see how you can keep track of your ovulation. Try and see how you can take note of your ovulation. So when you know, oh, this is my ovulation date, you try as much as possible to have sex with your husband on that particular date to get pregnant. So that might increase your chances of getting pregnant too. Then also, there might be different methods of um increasing your egg production, in releasing more eggs. So there might be ovulation induction. Ovulation induction might be done for you by your doctor. They might give you chromiphys citrates, gonadotropins. Like I will always tell you, these are not medications you go over the counter and get and take on your own. All these things are being done under the guidance of your doctor, under the guidance of a gynecologist and obstetricians. So you are not the one that's going to do it. Your fertility doctor will be the one doing all these things for you, telling you how to take the drugs, telling you what to do, why several scans are going through during that process. 
And another thing that can be done is what we call intrauterine insemination. Intrauterine insemination, where the sperm is being washed, ovulation, egg is being released, ovulation is being ovulation takes place, egg is being released, the sperm is washed and is inserted into the woman for fertilization to take place. That can also increase your chances of giving birth. Then also, there's no way I will forget about giving birth without saying in vitro fertilization. In vitro fertilization, I actually call it artificial method of fertilization because the egg has to be taken out of the woman's body, the sperm has to be taken out of the man's body, and fertilization has to be taken has to take place outside then the embryo that is being formed is being transplanted or transported into the woman's body. So IVF might be an option for those that have done this method. They have unexplained um, infecting litting. So there are a lot of reasons. Some women might not want to do this IVF because of some religious reasons, because they don't want any medical um, injections, they don't want anything, they don't want some injections, they don't want some medications, they don't just want anything medical, they have some religious belief about it. So there, people might, some women might have reasons why they don't want to do in vitro fertilization. What I advise such women is to keep trying with the natural method. Since it's unexplained, their body system is okay, they might likely get pregnant. They might get pregnant with the natural method. But if you have the money and you feel you can do it, you don't have anything disturbing you, you can go ahead and do it, then it's advisable you give it a try because um, IVF increases your chances of giving birth. It increases your chances of getting pregnant and giving birth to your baby. So for those that have done all the tests and it's normal, it is known as unexplained infertility. Thank you very much for staying tuned. Thank you very much for watching this video. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and also don't forget to share with a friend if you got value. For all my returning subscribers, this is Nosmes Mary saying thank you. Bye and see you in our next video.